So what does a designer need to know about high volume production? So when within the circuit board industry, we have different types of, of, of manufacturing and you know, small, medium, large volume means something different to different people. Within our organization, we class small volume as you know, sub 50 panels and a production panel being typically 18 by 24 inches in, in area. Anything 50 panels plus be below, uh, between 50 and 100, we would class as medium. And then anything above 100 panels, we would class as, you know, high production for us. Now, obviously, that's not high production, you know, as compared to, for example, the automotive industry, where, you know, they may be producing hundreds of thousands of, of units per day. Um, but in the type of environment which we operate in, in the high regulatory environment with aerospace and defense and, you know, the other sectors which we support, you know, this is what we're terming small, medium and large volume production for the purpose of today's webinar. Well, you know, the features or the, the benefits that we get from high volume production uh, are, you know, cost efficiencies, uh, obviously, obviously being able to leverage economies of scale, time saving, uh, obviously with having a prototype shop and then taking it seamlessly through prototype into medium or mass production, then we've got the, uh, you know, obviously the time saving aspect and, you know, helps the customer to get their product to market quicker. Um, high product consistency. Uh, obviously, the larger the volume, the more process control that we can put in place and the more we can learn from the production and, 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 and increase the efficiency and the overall effectiveness of that process. And then ultimately, you know, a lower production cycle. So the, what is the importance of efficient prototyping? So within the prototype space, 70% of the design costs are typically locked in at this early stage. You know, when we look at design and a, a, a PCB or, or an assembly, we look at the materials, we look at the real estate, we look at the, you know, the mechanical functionality requirements of the product and the electrical requirements of the product. And they're all, always designed in at that early P1, P2, P3 stage build. Now, once the production cycle commences, we can still make changes, we can still, you know, have some form of optimization, but generally it's to do with real estate, surface finishes, or minor changes. Um, you know, you can you can obviously drive efficiencies at that stage, but you know, most of the low hanging fruit, if you like, is in that early prototyping stage. Um, for a successful prototype, we really want to try and reduce the design complexities. Um, we want to make a product which is transferable. Um, which is built to IPC or to, you know, the, the correct regulatory requirements. And it meets all the design requirements of the customer. Uh, but ultimately, you know, form, fit, function, and the testing of that device is all really done at the prototype stage. And what we really want to have as an output from the prototype is a product delivered, you know, on time to a place of our customers choosing at a fair and reasonable price. But we really want to use that prototyping stage to iron out all of the all of the bugs, you know, any design iterations, any modifications as we go through the P1, P2, P3 cycles, so that when the product does go into mainstream production, it's gonna it's gonna run very very efficiently. So some of the design challenges in high volume production: so building thousands of boards and then realizing they're not operational. So many times I've seen this, you know, in a in a typical you know PCB manufacturing operation. You know, they, they will do everything in the same process. So they will take their mass production facility and they will try and run a prototype through it, you know, maybe in a, in a, in a faster time than a you know, normal standard production. Um, but within these scenarios, if you don't go through the P1, P2, P3 and, you know, really use that as a chance to, you know, bring the board to maturity, then you can end up building thousands of products before you actually get them into the, you know, the testing part of the design cycle and only to realize that they're either not operational or, you know, not as efficient as we thought. There's also the increased costs that would come with that due to multiple respins and, you know, poor yield if it hasn't been designed to manufacture correctly. And then obviously production delays and, and, and you know, material delays due to, you know, component availability should it be a constrained market, which is, you know, what we've just come out of for the last two to three years. So here within Sierra, we really offer this, you know, virtually integrated solution. Um, so we, we obviously have our prototype facilities, we have our medium and mass production facilities through PCB fabrication, but then we also have our assembly, 
and, and testing facilities and our component procurement facilities too. So by you know by teaming up with Sierra, you know it helps you to find the right manufacturer right at that early stage, who's capable not only of bringing your prototypes to market but also enabling that seamless transition into the large production uh, environment using the same equipment and processes. It stops you or eliminates the need to do you know further qualifications. Um, engaging with our teams to discuss any material and procurement uh, component procurement uh, requirements is key too. Um, obviously in a prototype shop, you know, we don't have the luxury of being able to take three, five, ten weeks to, you know, manufacture things. Um, you know, from really engaging with the designer to ship an assembled product, we're really talking deals here within Sierra. So it's important that we have this virtual integration. Um, being well versed with the DFM and the DFX guidelines is, is very, very helpful too. Um, and then obviously going through the um, you know the contract review process and the documentation review process helps us to raise any you know technical or engineering queries at that early stage and make sure when we do launch into production it's right first time. Um, we also decide the volume requirements at that point so that we can you know tool onto our um, production panel sizes. Our standard sizes are 18 by 24, but we do do various other options too. Um, based on you know material utilizations, and then our team of you know software, hardware, and design engineers can really help work with your design teams to modify the designs accordingly. Should there be some iterations that are required, so identifying the right manufacturer is really really key. Um, I'm just going to leave this here as a, as a graphic that you can read later. I don't want to go too much into it, but it really starts with the manufacturer's capabilities, understanding what they are. You know, understanding the company, how are they managing their supply chain, what sort of certifications they have, you know, what type of technical um, you know, capabilities they have. But these are really all of the key stages which we deem to be important uh, in choosing the right manufacturer from the get-go. Specialized equipment for high volume production. Um, within Sierra, um, you know, obviously we have unique equipment sets. Um, the whole industry works on 18 by 24 inch panels, but in a prototype shop, you know, we've got to think of time. So we think of things like, you know, how many setups would we need to do with the, you know, these standard types of, um, you know, equipment uh, sets. So within our facility, it's slightly different. We do use the same equipment sets, but we tend to have large baths, large beds and things like this so that, you know, we can have exactly the same electrical, mechanical, and functional performance from our prototype process, you know, is the same from our um, mass production process. Um, one of my colleagues, Steve Dutton, who's the director of our aerospace and defense sector, you know, explained this a little bit more succinctly in, you know, specifically to plate and baths. Uh, you know, a small volume bath, if you like, can create exothermic heat in certain areas and you have less flow around them tanks so that you can have you know, problems or localized issues, you know, just based off the equipment um, sets. By using larger tanks, you know, we can put things in there such as, you know, vibration, ultrasonics, and, you know, we can have really good flow systems within our tanks to help us get a, a product, a better product out to the, you know, out to the customer. It also, within our assembly process, you know, we have the latest state-of-the-art kit and place machines, reflows with nitrogen, not automatic testing equipment. Again, it's designed to um, minimize the, the time through the prototype stage, but also to help with aiding in efficiency and capacity and constraints, constraints as we go into mass production. So very unique equipment sets here. They are based off industry standard, but then they're modified to the type of business which we, which we do here in, in Sierra. So some of the uh, some of the slides that I'm going to kind of go through a little bit quickly because, as I said, Olian, my colleague, is going to do a demonstration at the end of some of the OnWest software tools, and, and we'll cover these. But really, you know, what the, the, the takeaway from this slide is, you know, right up at that, you know, early beginnings. This is some of the critical data which we require so that we can, you know, launch into production quicker. So you know, the type of technology, whether it's HDI, flex, flex rigid, is it a microelectronic type of technology? These things really help us to determine, you know, which facility, which process, which equipment sets, which we should use within our uh, within our facility. Stack up details are critical. You know, number of layers, the material, you know, the layer order, the copper weights, all of these things again, you know, help us with within our manufacturing. 
And, you know, we can really engage with you early on here because we can help you to drive some of the costs out of your design. An example I like to use here is that, you know, the designers always like to put, you know, double and triple ply constructions into their designs. Uh, you know, thinking about dielectric separation, you know, resin to glass uh, ratios and things like this. But, you know, from a cost perspective, you know, each sheet of prepreg or each layer that you put in there, you know, can be up to 15% of the overall cost of that design. So, you know, we can really help at that early stage by maybe suggesting instead of a triple ply construction, why don't you go to, for example, a larger or a thicker core and try this prepreg instead. And again, there's a lot of, you know, engineering uh, interface that can have at that early stage. Other information, you know, surface features, you know, surface finish type materials, you know, what kind of requirements you need. Is it IPC, grade two, grade three, is it mill grade, mill spec, what kind of UL requirements? All of these things really help us choose our material sets process and ensure that the product that we send to you is, is to, you know, fit for purpose. Some of the cost drivers within board manufacturing, you know, I 